Okay, what I want to show you now is how to disassemble and clean your Rhino grinder. This should be how you receive it from the box, brand new. And what we did is we went ahead and plugged it in so you could see the power light is on. So you have a solid green light. What I'm going to do is turn the main switch off and wait a few seconds for that light to go out. And there it's out. So the first thing I want to do is just start taking it apart, move the lid. I'm going to rock the topper up a little bit, lift it out, remove the catch crank. Remove the front. Simple as that. Okay, now to remove the cover, what you do is you have a little anti rotation screw, back it out, and it stays there. It doesn't come completely out, okay? And then you take it, rotate the cover, and you hear that click. It means I'm lined up with my slots, and it pulls off. So I'm going to set this aside for now. Alright, this is one of the grinding plates and it has to come off to be cleaned. Normally they're, well, normally what's going to happen is the whole auger is going to spin. So I really can't take it off with the auger spinning. So you have a little screw down here, it's a little post on a spring, and what you do is you push it up. Then I'm going to rotate the auger until I feel that post engage. So now I can remove the front grinding plate. What I'm going to do here for a second is put it back on. And just say, for example, the machine's dirty, it's been used, and it's too tight for you to get it off with just your hands. So there'll be a tool in the back of your machine, and this is what it looks like. And again, you raise the spring-loaded post up to the auger's locked. Now your tool will only go on one way. You have two little posts on one side that prevents you from putting it on. The posts face outward. You put the little wrench on. And that loosens the outer grinding plate. Okay. So now, to take this whole assembly off, you loosen these thumb screws here. And if you notice where I removed the catch tray, there's two little holes, one on one side that holds your thumb screw. One on the other side, holds the thumb screw, and then that just comes off. To continue with the disassembly of the Rhino grinder, these are two of the parts that we just removed. This is the front cover, and what you're going to see is you have a rubber part in here, and it's called the duckbill valve. And the easiest way to get that out of there is take your thumb, and you can see the duckbill valve up in here. What I'm going to do is give it a little push to get it started. So you get that one corner up, and then come in here and get the other corner up, and then it comes right out. Now, what I'm going to show you while we're doing this real quickly is it only goes in one way. And that's how it came out. But if you try to put it in the wrong way, you have this wrong, long flange that will not fit down into the slot. So just be aware of that, and then it's short on this side. So again, this position specific it goes in one way. Now, you have your locking ring on here, and to remove that, you have three more thumb screws. You just simply back those out, and again, the screws do not come all the way out. And this locking ring comes off for cleaning. Now when you go to put it back, you can see these little nuts on top. 
Those always come to the outside facing you. They never go on with the nut side down. And the other thing you'll notice, these holes are not evenly spaced, so it's very specific of how it goes back on. Now to remove the back grinding plate, you remove the two screws that you use to adjust from fine to coarse. Those can come completely out. And then there's your rear grinding plate. And then this is just your main casting that holds everything together. And again, that needs to be washed as well. Do here is attach the rear grinding plate to the main housing and what you're going to see is a little notch little V right here and that will go to the top this being the top the easiest way we found to put this in is you take these two threaded screws and just screw in about that much you can see how much thread I have left and we'll do the same for the other side that much and now I'm going to put the V to the top and then these two screws line up with these two slots so here we go so now it's in place and you can rotate to either coarse or fine and once you have it into position you want you just tighten the screw up and make sure it recesses down into the casting like it is right there. And of course you do the same for the other side. And that's all there is to it, just thumb tight. Going to put the duckbill valve in. And remember it's position specific. The long side goes to the left, the short side goes to the right. Insert it in. And if you do like that right there, that's not correct. You have to push it all the way down where it's completely flush all the way around. There's not any part of the rubber sticking up above the casting, okay? So that's inserted properly. So now you have your locking ring. And the thing you want to notice on that is you have some welded on nuts. Those nuts always go to the outside. They never go to the inside as such, okay? So before you put it on, the first thing you want to do is make sure everything's nice and clean because this is where the sealing takes place. So you make sure your casting's clean and your locking ring's clean all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here out of position just so you can see that it has a certain way it has to go on. You can see I, I kind of got this one nut lined up. This one's way off. This one's kind of close, but that's not right, and I'm sure you guys can see that. So you rotate it around, and then there are all the holes line up, okay? I can get it started. Got one. and there's the third one and again they're just finger tight that's all you have to do okay. let's put the main housing back on and it just slides right over the auger get my thumb screws Now, I'll snug both of them down that everything's located. Then we're going to put on the front grinding plate. Of course, the teeth always face each other. So we're going to start it. Now, before, we would rotate the auger and you had a little locking pin underneath there that would lock the auger in place. There's no need to do that when you're putting it back together because it will self-tighten. 
All right. The little nuts are facing outward. The way I like to do it is just start them all. Don't really bear down and tighten at this time. That way it's easier to get them all going. And once you have all three located, then go back, give them all a final little snug turn, okay? Now to put the ductile valve back in, <clears throat> if you notice, you have a long side and you have a short side. Well, in this housing, you have a long side, you have a short side. And that's how the ductile valve has to go in. It will not work like that. So over here we're putting in the correct way and make sure the rubber is flush with the metal okay the rubber cannot be up higher than the metal otherwise you're going to get a clacking sound if you get a clacking sound then your ductile valve has rose up and it needs to be pushed down into its own position as such okay so once we have it like that come around to the front of the unit line up our tabs with the slots and then rotate it into place and we have our little anti-rotation thumb screw right here so now that's all on so all we need now is our hopper these four posts in the back. We have four holes or four slots up here on top of the nut grinder. Four posts go on first and then just lower it down into place. And just make sure it's sitting flush, everything's lined up and looks good. And then you have your lid and you have your Okay, this is the power cord that comes with your Rhino grinder. And it simply plugs into the back here and we already have the other end plugged into a regular wall outlet and we recommend that you use a 20 amp dedicated circuit now to turn it on you have a master power switch right here i turn it on and you notice your button here is going to flash red green yellow and once it's solid green the machine's ready to operate so now it's solid green I push the button. And then it runs. Now what I want to show you now is a couple of safety features that's on the Rhino grinder. And one is with the hopper itself. If the hopper is removed, of course we don't want somebody putting their fingers into the auger or getting hurt or damaged or whatever. So what happens, there's a little sensor here that goes in this hole and that tells the machine the hopper is removed so right now you get a flashing green light so with that flashing green light the machine will not operate nothing's happening so to satisfy the machine and make it happy where it wants to run I'm going to make these four posts with these four slots in the very back here poster in the slot, rotate it down, the sensor here goes in the hole, and we should have a solid green light, and we do. So I'll push the button, and the machine runs. Now the other safety feature is with the front. Now the front just simply pulls off, rotate it down a little bit, and it pulls free, and here's your sensor here and it mates with this slot right here. So now the nut grinder, the Rhino grinder knows the front's removed. So you have a flashing red light. And again, the machine will not operate. Nothing happens. So I put the front back on. And now we'll get a solid green light. And the machine will run. So then to turn it off, hit the main power switch and the machine is completely off. One. 
Okay, we have your catch tray. That needs to go onto the unit and simply lay it right here and slide it back. Okay, now for whatever nut products you're going to dispense, this is your label holder and it, that's how the unit comes with that. The 4x4 label, remove this placard, it goes right there and then into the machine. If you have a 4x6, you don't, don't need the placard and this just drops right into the machine. So right now, remove the lid, we're going to put the nuts in the hopper, we're going to put the lid on, make sure it's down and flush. So now what we're ready to do is grind some nuts. Okay, this is the first time this nut grinder has been used. So what I'm going to do is have my tray, push the button. And I'm going to stop right there for a second. What you can see, when it first initially starts, you're going to get powder. And it takes a second for it to build up and actually start grinding and, and dispensing peanut butter. So there you have it. That's how you set up a rhino grinder, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you.